So I'm sketching sine and cosine curves again. This time I'm going to do y equals a times sine x, where a is a number, or y equals a times cos x, where a is a number. So for instance, um, this sketch at the moment is y equals 1 sine x, or just sine x. What would happen if it was y equals 2 sine x? Little slider here, and watch what happens when I increase that number. Ooh. Okay, so y equals 2 sine x, you can see that that uh, increases what's called the amplitude of, of our function. The amplitude is the distance from here, 0, to the top, okay, or from the middle to the top, or from the middle to the bottom, that's going to be our amplitude. Uh, if we increase it again, you can see it's getting larger and larger and larger, 3 will bring it up to 3. Now, if I make it negative... It flips the whole thing upside down. So instead of the sine curve starting at zero and moving upwards, the sine curve still starts at zero and begins moving downwards to whatever that A value is, in this case, negative 1.5. So the question was, why sketch Y equals 3 sine X? Then I just need to sketch my sine curve, but instead of moving up to just 1 like I did last time, I need to move up to a much higher value. 3 in this case, y equals 3 sine x. So I'll start there, I'll get all the way up to there quite quickly, back down to the beginning, 1, 2, 3, down to negative 3 at 3 pi on 2, and then back to here. All right, so try to keep things as smooth as possible. It's harder when you go higher with these to keep it smooth. Okay, and that is um, y equals 3 sine x between 0 and 2 pi. It would say something like when 0 is less than x, which is less than 2 pi. If you want to sketch it further, say into the negatives, it's pretty straightforward. Again, try to keep things quite smooth. I'm moving, trying to move a little faster here, but you really want to make sure that things stay nice and tidy. You can see I'm a bit, bit off there but it should have a nice sort of bend in it. Uh, now, that's now between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Uh, one last thing we really want to explore is the cosine curve, which isn't going to be much different. You can see here that here's y equals cos x. If I increase my a value, same thing happens. Just be aware, though, that the cosine curve starts at the top it doesn't start at zero which means that if I use a negative value and we definitely will for this one like negative two then the whole thing flips upside down and your starting point is actually a negative value not a positive value let's use negative two okay let's uh, sketch that by hand so here's our question sketch y equals negative two cos x so the negative two is how or is how high the amplitude is going to be from the middle of it to the top and from the middle of it to the bottom. Cos curves start, because it's negative, it's going to start at the bottom. If it was positive, it would start at the top. But the cosine curve doesn't start in the middle. All right, so it starts there, moves into the center. Oh, it's negative 2 there. Moves into the center, goes up to positive 2, um, comes back to the center, moves down back to where it started at negative 2. And then nice curves. I'm using a pen this time, living dangerously. And again, I could do that all the way backwards as well if I wanted to. It really depends on how the question is worded and how far they want you to sketch it. All right, so that's y equals negative 2 cos x over there. And this one in pencil is y equals uh, 3 sine x there. The a value tells you the amplitude. That's what, it's, that's what it does.